Hello and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. This is episode 32. I am your host, Christy, and golly gosh, guys, I have missed you. <laughs> if you are new to my podcast, then you will now learn that I have been on a hiatus for the past two weeks while my parents visited from California. And so I have basically done nothing uh, with my channel or with the podcast group or with Instagram for the past two weeks, with just a few exceptions. And it has kind of left a little hole in my heart. Um, so I am very excited to be getting back to it today. You can find me on Ravelry as Christy Dash Lael and on Instagram as Christy Lael without the dash. There is also a relatively crafty podcast group that I mentioned earlier uh, where we discuss uh, all kinds of knitting stuff and life stuff. There are giveaways every so often. There are knit alongs. There is just chatter. You are encouraged to show off your stuff and just have a good time uh, hanging out with each other. And all that information uh, is down below in the down bar, so you can look there to find proper spellings and whatnot. We are currently having a knit along in our podcast group on Ravelry. Uh, it is the Summer Socks Discal, which is running from June 21st, which was the Summer Solstice, and will end on September 21st, which is the Autumn Equinox, the beginning and the end of summer. And um, you are encouraged to chatter in the chatter thread, show off what you are working on, talk about patterns, you know, come for advice if you need it, and then we have an FO thread that you are encouraged to show off your FOs in hence the name FO thread. Um, I do ask that you don't chatter in the FO thread. If you want to give somebody kudos for their amazing socks that they've just finished, please put that information in the chatter thread and you can ear burn them there and they will see it. Um, also, I do encourage you to post your FOs in the chatter thread as well so that everybody can just reply to them and talk about how awesome they are. I am way behind on the chatter thread, so I am going to, well, honestly, I'm way behind on the entirety of the group. Um, I, I, uh, I had planned on keeping up on everything while my parents were here, but we went camping and we had almost no reception. So I lost a whole week while we were camping and, um, and then I just couldn't quite get back into it um, after we got back and I'm just now starting to get back into the swing of things. But, um, but I do plan on catching up and chattering in the thread and, um, and I look forward to uh, checking out the FOs as well. We do have some prizes for this Summer Socks Discal. The first one being a skein of Yarn Cafe Creations in the Castle on a Cloud colorway. And then Carrie from Creative Obsessions very generously donated this skein of Ariel in her, um, her lovely sock base. And then lastly, we have this very awesome sparkly skein by April who dies for bar maintenance. This is the Earl Grey Tea Cocktail colorway on her Drunken Sock base, which is a sparkly base, and it also comes with the recipe for the cocktail in this pretty little bag. And those are the prizes that I have currently. Um, I may pick up some more uh, between now and the end of the Cal. We still have almost two full months, so um, there's plenty of time to pick up more prizes. Uh, if you are so inclined to donate a prize, then feel free to contact me on Ravelry, and uh, that would be awesome. So, uh, anyway, I feel very awkward. <laughs> Being away for two weeks has really made things feel awkward. I'm hoping that this won't come off as awkward as I feel like it is. Um, but as I said, I, I have been gone for the past two weeks. My parents came in on July 2nd and and they just left on the 15th. And um, as I said, I had planned on doing lots of things while they were here. I planned on keeping up on my um, on the podcast group. I planned on knitting like the wind. I planned on reading a thousand books. Um, I planned on doing all kinds of things. I did not accomplish all kinds of things though. One of the things that I didn't take into account was how much driving I would have to do while my parents were here. 
Uh, we, nobody in my family has a car that fits more than five people, and so um, when we do family trips that involve more than five people, then we have to take two cars. Now, in the past, when we've gone on trips with my parents, we have um, rented a minivan, and um, that, that seats seven, and that fits everybody, and then my dad does all the driving. Uh, however, for this trip, my parents uh, brought their Jeep and, um, and didn't rent a car, and so, um, so we ended up taking two cars everywhere with my dad driving the Jeep and me driving our car. And so when we went on our day trips while we were here in town, um, I was driving and I did get to knit a little bit while we were walking around and checking out museums and whatnot, but, um, but I didn't get as much time because of the driving. Uh, and then when we went camping, a lot of time was spent driving and hiking. We went up to the Rocky Mountain National Park, which is about an hour and a half away from here. Uh, it, uh, it, we, we actually camped in Estes Park, which is right at the base of the National Park. Uh, my parents have an RV and they brought it up with them. And um, so the Wednesday after they got here, July 5th, we left and went on a camping trip for the entire week. And as I said, we got no reception up there. Um, they had Wi-Fi at the park, but it was really spotty. And so um, I didn't get to do much of anything as far as internet things go. And because we were doing these, these, you know, driving along trails around the park, we drove up to the summit, we did all kinds of great fun things, checking out Estes Park, the town, and all this stuff. Um, I was the one driving, so I didn't get to knit then, and then when we weren't driving, we were hiking. And I don't know if you've ever tried to hike and knit, but it's really not very comfortable. Um, I, I did knit when we were sitting around, and I knit in the evenings, but, um, but after you've hiked for, you know, hours and driven through some really treacherous mountain roads, you're kind of beat up, and so, um, so... I was tired <laughs> when we would get into the RV at night and I got sunburned and you know it just it we got rained on and it was just it was tiring and so I I didn't knit very much uh, not nearly as much as I expected to in fact I um, I haven't knit a single sock not a single sock in all of July so far and July is over half over um, yeah, I, that, that's just crazy for me. I got home, uh, and realized that I hadn't even started a sock <laughs> by the time we got home from our, from our camping trip in the middle of the month. Um, I have since started a sock, but, um, but I haven't finished one. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm having to kind of focus a little bit on socks while, uh, I, for the rest of the month because I have some knit-alongs that I have to participate in every single month. But anyway, we had a great, great visit uh, with my parents. Um, I've mentioned this before, but my folks are planning on moving here to Colorado next summer. And the reason that they came for two weeks, but we only camped for one week, was so that they could kind of tour the neighboring uh, areas and try to find a place or a list of places that they want to settle in at. Um, they are retiring, and this is kind of like their retirement home that they're planning on living in for the rest of their lives and so they really want it to be the the the, the kind of place and the kind of area that that they've always dreamed of you understand and so um so the town that i live in is a little bit too cosmopolitan i guess for them, we are really close to Denver, and my dad hates big cities, and so um, they definitely don't want to be this close to Denver, and um, and they want to be a little bit more rural. They want to be in nature. They don't want to deal with grass. They want it to be, you know, natural uh, um, landscaping so that you know, the deer can come in and the rabbits and, and whatnot, and they can just have their, their birds. My dad is very much into birds. And 
sit out on the porch and drink their coffee and watch the nature go by and just kind of enjoy their retirement. It's totally understandable. Um, but we are kind of limited in the amount of areas that are close that have the aspects that my folks want. Um, there is uh, Woodland Park, which is a beautiful area, but it's about an hour and a half away. And while it is just about nearly perfect, it's a little bit too far. And so we're hoping that they can find something a little bit closer. There are some towns that are closer that uh, do fit the bill. And so it's about finding uh, the closest place that fits all the things that my parents want and their price range. And um, and so we met with a real estate agent. She's going to start looking for places. And my folks have um, the next seven or eight months to kind of look at houses and, and narrow down their, their wants and needs. And then hopefully by next spring, end of winter, beginning of spring, they'll be able to pick a house and get it set up so that next summer they can just move in. My mom is a teacher, as I've mentioned. This uh, next school year is her last school, school year, and so their plan is that once the, um, the school year ends, they'll be able to move within a couple of weeks. Uh, so everything is supposed to be set up and ready to go by then. So that was one of the reasons why they came for so long, and they were really able to get some good ideas, and uh, and the meeting with the real estate agent really kind of helped solidify some, some things for them, and so it was a really good trip for that, plus we just got some really good, you know, family time in. Uh, it was a really great trip. We loved the camping. I completely solidified how gorgeous Colorado is. I'll we'll try to post some pictures. I might be, I might have already been posting pictures as we've gone on. Um, I, I just, I really, really enjoyed how beautiful the Rockies were. Uh, it rained nearly every day while we were up there, but it was beautiful rain and um, just a beautiful area. We saw so many um, animals deer and elk and whatnot and it w it was great it was just a great great trip and then when we got back we you know spent time as a family and that was great as well the girls got to spend a lot of time with their grandparents i got to hang out with my mom um and my dad of course um uh, and yeah it was just just a really good vacation a really good visit. So, um, so yeah, I do appreciate that you guys, you know, um, understood that I was taking my hiatus. I am now back in full force and, um, everything is back on, uh, everything that was put on hold, uh, while my folks were here is back on. Ron is back at work. We're both back at school. Um, I'm back knitting and reading and recording and everything's back the way it was and uh, so yeah so let's get into the knitting. I technically finished these socks before my parents came here. I finished them on July 1st. Um, I had tried really hard to get these done before the end of June but I just didn't quite make it. Um, these are the um, this is the This is Stranded Dye Works in the one-of-a-kind street art colorway uh, on her Oasis base. And I had knit this for her Britnick cowl that ended on June 30th and I didn't quite make it, as I said. Um, but I still ended up with some really groovy socks and, um, and I love them. Uh, they're so wild and speckly and I just absolutely dig them. Um, I started, you know, this is basically my my go-to sock recipe. Um, I started with a Turkish cast on, toe up, knit to do a fish lips kiss heel, which is the way I normally do it when I've got a variegated or speckly yarn, and then uh, continued up and did ten rows of of one by one ribbing and ended with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And um, yeah. These have been sitting in here on the blockers for the past two weeks. <laughs> now I can finally pull them off the blockers and use them, although it is still really warm. So 
I'm not really wearing a lot of hand knit socks right now. I am wearing a lot of uh, barefootness right now. Although I really cannot complain because uh, back home it has been in triple digits for most of for for a lot of June and July so far. Um, they've been getting you know we're a whole week is in triple digits up to 108 and um, and that's just ucky 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 we have I think our highest we got was like 97 one day um, but it's been in the low 90s upper 80s um, I think on Sunday it's only supposed to be 80 degrees I said it before I'll say it again I love Colorado <laughs> Uh, another thing that I finished, and it was one of the things that I worked on for the most uh, while we were camping, and that is the sock head hat that I knit for my brother. Uh, I will post a picture here because I no longer have it. Um, my brother's birthday, his 36th birthday, was on July 14th, and so um, he lives back in California. And so when my parents left, they took it home with him, or with them for him. Uh, and he has received it, and he loved it, and he likes the color, he likes the fit. Um, I've made sock head hat for him before, as I've said, but it got uh, moth-eaten, and so this is a replacement. And I knit it out of uh, Lolo Did It in the Hippo for Dad colorway, which I think worked out really well for him. It had, you know, it's, it's gray with brown and blue and kind of um, mustardy green type speckles, and yeah, it worked out really good. Um, I do need to remember, uh, I made it almost to pattern specifications, except for instead of knitting nine inches for the um, stockinette part, I only knit seven inches. I think nine inches is a little bit too long, makes it a little bit too slouchy. But one thing that I'm going to change the next time I make this, and I've made this pattern now four or five times is I'm going to do one by one ribbing, I think, for the four inches of ribbing instead of two by two. And the reason for that is that I do all of my socks one by one ribbing, and I do all the ribbing on like gloves and stuff like that one by one ribbing. And so when I go to do two by two ribbing, I get mixed up every single time. And it's like a constant thing. So for four inches of this very simple rib, I kept messing up. I kept having to pay closer attention and go back and fix it. Um, and I just know that if I did one by one ribbing, that four inches of ribbing would go by like that. Um, so, so yeah, so next time I make this pattern, and I'm sure I will make it at least one more time. I'm going to do it with one by one ribbing. I think that's going to help a lot uh, to go towards my enjoyment of the pattern. And then the only other thing that I finished is a bunch of mini socks. Uh, if you recall, I didn't knit a single mini sock um, for all of June. So for the stranded socks that I just showed you, I knit this little mini sock. I think this one's adorable. For the Hippo for Cinco socks that I showed you in my last podcast, I've got a little mini sock. And then this is the Dragon Horde yarn in My Island. This is the Biscotti and C um, colorway that I knit for my box of socks for June. This was such a great stripey colorway. And then if you recall, this is the Desert Vista Dye Works in um, Frosted Peeps that I knit for my mom. Um, and I, I knit that for my June uh, socks for that knit along. And I did get my um, acknowledgement uh, from uh, Desert Vista Dye Works saying that I had made all of my socks for the first six months and I have earned my free skein, which is awesome. And my mom loved these socks. When, when she showed up, I handed them to her and she goes, oh, those are gorgeous. Are those for me? And I was very happy to be able to say yes. Yes, they were. And then the last mini sock that I made is this one, which if you recall was out of um, Knitterly Things in the summer evening yeah i think summer evenings colorway and i can now say because they have been received that i knit these socks as a surprise birthday gift for carrie of the creative obsession it was quite an experience trying to knit socks as a complete surprise for somebody who i've never actually met in real life and who lives you know three states over um 
about three states over, up and over. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I knit these for Carrie. As I said, her birthday was last month, and um, she has been very generous with me, and so I wanted to kind of repay some of that generosity and celebrate her birthday. And so I contacted Michelle at the Naughty Knitwits, who is a real-life friend of Carrie's, and asked her what size shoe Carrie make, wears, and then made the socks accordingly. And uh, Michelle didn't lie to me, or wasn't incorrect, because... Carrie says the socks fit, and uh, she just posted in her most recent podcast that she had gotten them and that she likes them, and so that made my heart swell, and I am so happy, Carrie, that you enjoy the socks, and yeah, they were fun to knit, so there you go. So that is all of my FOs, and I am now caught up on my mini socks. Um, funny story, I was just knitting mini socks for the past couple of days, and I'm just going on and going on and grabbing the, the skeins that I had put in my bag. And I got about halfway through a sock and I realized that it was the Hippo for Mom colorway that I used to knit this hat. Um, which you might notice is not a sock. And so I had to rip that little sock out. I'd only gotten about halfway down the leg, so it wasn't like I had to rip out a whole lot. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use that leftover for socks. I might end up using them for something else. So I didn't want to make a mini representation of socks that I hadn't knit. So, um, so yes, yeah, so now I am caught up on all of my mini socks. And that's all the FOs that I have. Um, I do have two whips, uh, and they are good whips. So let me go ahead and show those to you. This is the first sock that I've knit in the whole month of July. I mean, not counting the mini representations of socks. Those don't count. This is my July entry for the Box of Socks Cal. Uh, as you know, I have been put, I've put aside uh, 12 of my oldest stripey skeins and have been using those for my Box of Socks. And so this was the one that I pulled out of the bags. This is Canon hand dyed in the Slytherin colorway. And, um, and it's working out very lovely. It's, you know, as you can see, slithering colors, blue, or blue, green and gray, not anywhere near blue. Um, and I am about halfway through the foot of the first sock. Um, I will be focusing on these. And these, um, for the rest of the month. This is my Desert Vista Dye Works entry for July. Uh, these are the two cowls that I have to do every single month. And so, um, so I will get these done. I have about two weeks left, so um, I should be able to get both of these completed before then, but they will be my focus until I get at least through the first pair and well into the second. And then my last whip is one that I'm sure you all are expecting. Um, I have, I had planned on knitting an entire uh, rainbow striped sweater for my mom and having it finished or nearly finished by the time she got here, which turned into having it pretty well started by the time she start, got here to having it just on the needles by the time she got here. Um, I ended up managing to get it on the needles and finish the ribbing on the bottom. It's a bottom-up bottom, bottom -up sweater. It's the gnarled oak cardigan. I'll post a picture right here. And I did the bottom ribbing and had started in on the second color stripe by the time she showed up. And then I worked on it a lot while she was here. Um, I did take a break in order to knit my brother's hat because I had to have that finished before they left. Um, but, um, but I did manage to get the body finished up into um, the, the armholes where you connect, this is a bottom-up raglan, so it's where you connect the sleeves and do the yoke. Um, and so this is that. You can see it's, it's wide because it's the entirety of the, um, you know, around her body, around her torso. Um, and, and yeah, so I'm doing it in rainbow order backwards. So I started with the red and I did the entire ribbing in the red and then orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, Roy Jabuf, um, 
and I did, uh, I figured out by math that um, I should do 12 rows per color um, in order to end so that I could do the yoke in the purple. However, when I got up to about here, I kind of realized that not all of these are spun the same weight. Um, you know, it, as is the way with hand spun yarns, um, they vary, they thicken thin and whatnot, and so the my row gauge isn't exactly the same on all of them, and I didn't think about that until I'd gotten well into the second round of colors, and I wasn't about to rip all that back out. So I did some quick thinking and decided to start adding um, to some of the rows as I got up here. So I did the red and orange in the 12 rows and then when I got to the yellow I did 14 rows and then the green I did 16 rows and the blue will be 18 rows and then um, the rest will be purple and that should take me just about to the right spot um, for the purple to do the yoke. Uh, so as I said I have done the body all the way to where you join the armhole, join the uh, sleeves, and um, and yeah, so this is basically on hold now um, until I get onto those socks. But I do plan on starting the sleeves as soon as I get the socks going. Um, Mom acknowledged that while well, she would have loved to have had it when she showed up today or showed up this month. Um, she's not going to wear this, not in Southern California, not when it's 105 degrees outside. So, um, so it will, it can be finished, um, between now and, and their fall, which is like mid-November. So, so yeah, so I, I am planning on finishing this up as soon as possible, um, but it'll probably be finished in August. And I love the way it's knitting up. The colors are so bright. She goes, well, everybody will see me when I'm coming. <laughs> and it looks like I'm going to have lots of uh, yarn left over. So I might um, make a matching sweater for Delaney. Uh, or, um, or a hat or something like that for Mom. But there, there's going to be plenty of yarn because uh, I still have a lot. And I'm well into the sweater. Okay, and that is all that I have on the needles. So, um, I don't even have any future knitting because I showed you the only things that I'm going to be working on for the rest of the month. So let's go ahead and get into um, yarn haul. I do have some yarn to show you, so I'll go ahead and get into those. Uh, the first is something that I picked up at my yarn shop before we left. Um, I had gone there to pick up a needle to make my brother's sock head hat, and... Um, and the owner, Tiffany, was putting out new yarn, and I I couldn't resist. So I grabbed this skein of Wren and Ollie in the colorway Apple Tonic, and it's gorgeous. It's not really... Like, I didn't think that this would be something that I would have been drawn to, but something about it, I just love this colorway. So, um, so yeah, I grabbed that. And then while I was gone, I got my June Rainbow of the Month skein from um, Knitterly Things. So if you haven't gotten yours, although you really should have by now, uh, you might want to look away. But here is, here is it. It's called Some Some Summertime, and it's got lots of pink. Um, and you know that I'm not the biggest fan of pink, so um, while Mom was here, or Mom was here while I was opening it, and she oohed and awed, and so I told her I would make her a pair of socks out of this. In fact, what I had her do while I was here, or while she was here, rather, is um, I told her to look through my socks, sock stash and pick out some yarn that she would like socks for herself out of, and so um, she picked out five or six skeins and put them in her own bag, and so now when I am looking to knit my mom a pair of socks, I can just grab that and know that it's going to be something that she's really going to like, and this will go into that bag. And then I have mentioned Erin at Bling Your String several times. She donated a bag for our um, our summer sweater cowl, and uh, she has her own group. She has uh, a group with Tiffany um, for their podcast, which is uh, 
knitting at Tiffany's with added bling, and then she also has a group for her shop, Bling Your String. And in that group, in the Bling Your String group, she is having a knit along for sock blanks, and I think it's a yearly thing. Um, and so you get extra points if you knit her sock blanks, and so she has started a sock blank club. And it's a monthly club, but you, you don't have to sign up for several months at a time. You just do it month by month. By month. And um, the June sock blank was the Jelly Bean colorway, and I couldn't say no to Jelly Beans. She doesn't tell you what it's going to be. She shows you a, an, an inspiration photo and then you kind of make your decision on that and the inspiration photo was adorable and she um she's you know being a friend she goes well you know what I'll try to keep as much pink out of it as I possibly can and she, I think she did an amazing job because look at how orange it is oh I love it so it's got um it's got mostly orange kind of mottled and then there's some blue and green and pink speckles in there and I think it is just going to make the most gorgeous socks. I cannot wait to knit this up. It's beautiful, Erin. Thank you so much. I really, truly love it. Um, and then she adds other goodies in with your package. There are, of course, jelly beans and I've been waiting to eat these. Now I don't have to wait anymore. And then she also included some really cute uh, snagless stitch markers, and I opted for the small size. Um, and they look like they're, they're beads, but they look like little jelly beans. And then there is a candy, a wrapped candy um, one, uh, as kind of like the focus stitch marker. And then I forgot that these were going to be in here. In fact, Erin, I didn't. It was kind of tucked inside the sock blank, and so I didn't see it when I opened the package. It wasn't until I started pulling things out to take pictures that I realized it was there. But there's a little um, progress keeper, and it's a little bowl with, like, heart jelly beans in there. It's adorable. So very cute. I'm so glad you added this. I completely forgot about it. And then, as I mentioned, when we were in Estes Park, I found a yarn shop going to find a yarn shop wherever I go to visit. Uh, and so they had the Stitchin' Den uh, right there in town, and it's a yarn, it's a like a knitting slash cross-stitch slash quilting slash crochet shop. Like there was, there's lots of, of, of fiber-ish arts uh, involved, and, um, and it was a really fun shop to walk through. Uh, I did look initially for sock yarn, uh, and I wasn't all that impressed with their with their sock yarn inventory. They did have um, Wonderland yarns, which is a great indie dyer, and um, they had lots of their stuff. Um, but most of it was sport and up, and they had you know beautiful um, like kits, uh, you know, gradient kits and stuff like that in Wonderland yarns. I was very tempted to get one of those, but I didn't need it. I didn't have any, like, any plans to knit those, and, um, and so I just kind of passed on it. I know that I can pick that up at another time. Estes Park is only an hour and a half away. I could always go back to that shop if I wanted to. Um, but what I ended up picking up is is MJ Yarns in their Peruvian Dreams base, uh, and the colorway is Connie, and it's just a beautiful yellow, um, and I absolutely fell in love with it. It was so bright. They had like six skeins, and it was half price. I almost grabbed all of them, but I, but it wasn't enough to make a sweater, and I didn't know what I needed with six skeins, and I knew that I could take these two skeins and make it into a, like a, a shawl or a cowl, um, but I didn't know what I would do with six, or maybe it was only four, something like that. It was it was not enough for a sweater, but um, this is 50% alpaca, 30% merino, and 20% silk, and it's it's worsted weight, but it's kind of a light worsted. <clears throat> And um, I'm not exactly sure yet what I'm going to do with it, but it is definitely next to the skin soft. It has a beautiful halo. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited to, to knit something 
luxurious with it. So, um, so yeah, definitely love this. Like I could just sit and pet it, really, just just pet it all day long. It's so soft, it's so soft. And that is all that I got um, on our on our vacation. Um, my mom did find a quilt shop in Lyon, um, which is a little bit closer to us. It's it's the town that you you hit before you drive through the mountains to get to Estes Park. And it was a really awesome quilt shop, um, and so she just had a blast in there. And it was it was cool to see her really excited about it. She's um, she's got all kinds of plans for for um, uh, quilting when she moves up here and retires. In fact, Carrie, I need to talk to you because she wants to buy a long arm quilting machine. She's already started a whole fund, uh, you know, savings account for it and is putting money into it on a regular basis. She's very excited to become a long arm quilter. So I'm going to have to get your advice on what's best to buy and how's best to learn how to use it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then speaking of Carrie, I um I got my swapless swap from the Naughty Knitwits podcast for the Creative Obsession uh, shop, and um, this is the one that I was really excited to get because, as we know, Carrie is an amazing dyer, very good with color, and here is all my minis, and I love them. Unlike the other two swapless swaps that I have been in on Naughty Knitwits, Carrie. Uh, dyed existing colorways. Um, at least some of them are existing colorways. Uh, the other two are gorgeous and I love them, but they're they're unnamed colorways for the swap uh, where Carrie dyed her colorways. Uh, so there's Fairy Wings, Drama Queen. I think I think this one is Drama Queen. And then Seaside Rendezvous, which I think is one of these two. Uh, then Happy Go Lucky Cherry Blossoms, which I'm almost positive is this one, and uh, and then Umbrella Drunk, Umbrella Drunk, Umbrella Drink, Hidden Beauty Succulents. Ooh, maybe this one, maybe this one is succulents. And then You're Not the Boss of Me, and then there is one unnamed colorway. So this is really cool because I can uh, now see what they look like and how they knit up. And, um, and then that will put me even more prepared to purchase the skeins if she puts them in her shop again. Um, so, so yeah, I, I absolutely love these, Carrie. You did such a great job. I can't wait to knit them. Um, I'm going to put them in my blanket for sure because I think they were going to go really well in my blanket. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. Now, of course, that is the crocheted uh, granny stripe blanket that I haven't started and don't even know how to crochet yet, but I do have some really great yarns to put into it, so I'm happy about that. And that's it, guys. That is all that I have to show you this week. I'm really glad to be back in the swing of things. I am looking forward to chatting with you guys back on Ravelry and reading your comments here on the video. And yeah, um, I did post a bunch of pictures of my vacation on Instagram, so you're welcome to go and see those. Um, and, uh, and yeah, have a wonderful day. Happy knitting. Enjoy your Tuesday. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.